Good afternoon, friends and colleagues. Thank you for spending time with us this afternoon in Mount Elizabeth's annual medical seminar. My name is Chi Kyung, and I hope to use this time to share with you what we have learned about the long-term consequences of COVID, specifically the neurological complications. So my talk today is entitled Insomnia and Headaches to Erectile Dysfunction and Memory Fog, the Long Reach of the COVID Brain. Now, how we study COVID, how we study any illness is typically in this sequence. We define the illness, we talk about the incidence, we try to talk about the pathology, and then we tell you how we treat the illness. But if you to apply this to long haul COVID, we will immediately run into problems. And this is how. Now, the problem is long haul COVID wasn't a term coined by doctors. In fact, what we knew of COVID initially from reports from Wuhan was that this was a relatively short lasting illness lasting between two weeks in mild cases or three to six weeks in more severe ones. However, patients experiencing COVID or recovering from COVID experienced a plethora of symptoms that were not previously described, and hence they formed support groups on Facebook and Twitter to describe their problems and support each other. The news media picked up on this, particularly when a professor of tropical medicine also experienced COVID and discovered that he had a lot of symptoms, a lot of fatigue as he was trying to get over this COVID illnesses. Long haul COVID was a term actually coined by Amy Webster as a name for the COVID support group uh, on Facebook. Long COVID term itself probably came from a hashtag. Given the difficult definition, let us try to look at the incidence of long haul COVID. Again, one of the first papers that came out was the result of a patient-led research group. An online survey of 3,000 participants with confirmed or suspected COVID-19 across 56 countries grouped together on an online web survey to describe their recovery symptoms. In all, a massive 203 symptoms across 10 organ systems were found. Now, if we were to look at the incidence of all these uh, symptoms, we find that actually there is an increased frequency of neuropsychiatric or cognitive symptoms such as brain fog, memory issues, slurring of words, and speech and difficulty like me stumbling over some of these words. And so COVID seems to affect the brain uh, uh, in unusual frequency. Of course, online web-based studies have their limitations, and a better paper would perhaps be one based on cohort studies. So over here, we have a paper by Maxim Taukir et al., which used uh, linked electronic records of about uh, 59 healthcare organizations uh, mainly based in the US. And in this cohort, they had about 273,000 COVID survivors. Using the, initial, using the more frequently described symptoms of COVID, they tried to hunt the EMR, they searched the EMR for symptoms suggestive of this, uh, that would correspond to the symptoms described in the earlier studies. And this included chest pain, abnormal breathing, abdominal symptoms, fatigue, malaise, anxiety, and so on. What they found was that about 57% of patients had either one or more long COVID features during the whole six-month follow-up period. Interestingly, another 37% or so only got the symptoms between the third and the six months of the study period. And when they compared this to patients recovering from influenza, COVID seems to give more post-dromal or, or recovery uh, symptoms than other viral illnesses. This, to study this, the incidence of long COVID further, we have a paper from Jennifer Lok, uh, published in JAMA Open in February this year. And this was a single, single center study with 234 participants uh, who contracted COVID between August and November 2020. And they were given a single follow-up questionnaire to fill up between the third and six months after disease onset. Uh, because it was uh, patients were accrued over a range of uh, a period of time. The median follow-up was about 169 days. And overall, about 37% of the uh, dial patients who had COVID uh, experienced long COVID symptoms. And about 31% of those who had more severe illness and were hospitalized also complained of long COVID symptoms. Predominant among them were fatigue and loss of sense of smell. And from the chart below, it seems as if that those with more severe illnesses uh, had more frequent uh, long COVID symptoms. So here we describe that patients have memory fog, insomnia, and headaches. But how does that happen? 
Well, we're not entirely certain, but to give us a clue, we can look into uh, acute pathology of the CNS in patients with COVID infections. Now, McAlpine et al. Uh, uh, from the Yale University found that patients with COVID were more likely to uh, have ischemic strokes. And this was linked, they found in their study, uh, published in Stroke June 2021 20, this year, to be linked to uh, various uh, markers of endothelial dysfunction. Specifically, patients who had stroke when they had acute COVID seemed to have higher levels of von Willebrand antigen, higher levels of factor 5, factor 8 activity, sorry, and von Willebrand factor activity, suggesting endothelial dysfunction occurs in COVID stroke patients and led to them having a stroke. What about those patients who did not get a clinical stroke? Well, um, Lee et al. Uh, in a post-mortem study of about nine patients uh, performed high-resolution re high uh, MRI studies of, uh, of post-mortem brains in such people. And what he found was that there were pantic hyperintensities uh, representing areas of microvascular injury and uh, fibrinogen leakage in these patients. And when they performed a corresponding histological study in these patients, they found in the slide over there, you can see, uh, there was evidence of uh, fibrinogen leakage uh, in, the, in the after rider context of these patients. But there was minimal perivascular inflammation and there was no vascular occlusion. Uh, slides B1 shows you the intact uh, vascular structures as well as the basal lamina of these patients. And B2 shows you areas of fibrinogen leakage. Importantly, PCR for SARS-CoV-2 virus was negative. So, so COVID seems to cause uh, immune-mediated endothelial dysfunction uh, in, acutely in patients who suffer from the COVID infection. What else does it do? Well, Song et al. Uh, researched the C, studied the CSF uh, of patients who had acute confusion or CNS features when they had uh, acute uh, COVID infection, and they found and they found, interestingly, that CSF uh, patterns of immune response differed from those in the serum. More importantly, there seemed to be autoreactive antibodies produced within the CSF itself. What about post-COVID patients? Well, Maza et al. Start, uh, in their single-center uh, prospective cohort study of about 230 patients, studied uh, psychological, psychopathological symptoms in patients about uh, three months uh, after hospital discharge. What they used was self-rated uh, rating scales such as a back depression index as well as the Zerg self-rated depression scale. They corresponded this to inflammatory markers during the acute infection and at three months of follow-up. Very interestingly, patients who had higher levels of systemic inflammation seem to have more depressive symptoms and the rate of change or the rate of decrease of these inflammatory markers corresponded with improvement in their depressive symptoms at three months. So although we do not have a specific cause, it all seems to point towards an immune or inflammatory related pathology. What else have we got? Well, are all the symptoms real? Well, uh, Zhao et al. In, uh, in the European Journal of Nuclear Medicine in January 2021, researched patients with uh, long COVID symptoms using FDG PET. What they found was a specific pattern of uh, glucose hypometabolism in the uh, bilateral rectal orbital gyrus, the, the olfactory gyrus and right temporal lobe, and this could very well account for the symptoms of memory fog and insomnia. And very interestingly, in the charts below, they found that the degree of hypometabolism corresponded with the degree of symptoms. The lower the metabolism, the more the symptoms. What sort of cognitive problems do patients have? Well, we can look at Becker's paper, which was published recently in October 2021. This is a cross-sectional study of 700 papers. I shall speak through this a little bit, given that we are running a bit out of time. But most prominently, well, patients were found to have reduced processing speed, impaired executive functioning, and as well, problems with memory occurring about 20 to 25% of these patients. So this is memory fog characterized. And if you look into the details of the chart, it seems as if patients who had more severe COVID illness, who were hospitalized, 
had significantly more symptoms than those who were managed as an outpatient. Now, we have talked about memory fog, we have talked about insomnia. There's just one more thing about the nervous system, the part that we need to get us up and running. That's right, we're talking about the autonomic nervous system. Now, uh, COVID dysautonomia was found, rather, dysautonomia was found in about 50% of post SARS patients in 2002. So we expect to have dysautonomia similarly described in COVID patients. Uh, the figure seems to be much less. Based on the initial study of 214 patients in Wuhan, we only had about 16% of patients reporting the symptoms. A retrospective cohort of about 800 patients in Spain only found this in about 2.5%. So what is the cause of the difference? Or is it because we are not looking out for it? Or does COVID just cause less dysautonomia? We are not certain. But to characterize this further, uh, the authors from Mayo published just their, their autonomic studies on a cohort of six patients with symptoms of autonomic dysfunction. And I'd just like to share them with you. The six patients, both male and female, most predominantly reported autonomic symptoms of postural lightheadedness. They have syncope and near syncope. And former autonomic tests were done. Some of them were found to have autostatic hypotension. The rest were postural tachycardia, which is consistent with POTS. And of course, autonomic system is responsible for other things like erectile dysfunction, which we have mentioned in the subject title. Having discussed the span of neurological symptoms in COVID, let us now talk about treatment. And there's nothing. Nothing has really been proven to work for uh, long-haul COVID symptoms, but again, we derive some hope from pre preliminary studies, again, based on patient cohorts. Now, this is a preprint paper in Lancet, uh, prepared by uh, uh, Stain's group, okay, uh, in, from the University of Exeter. So this is what I've done. We've gotten, again, a web survey, ready, of uh, four participants. 800 of whom uh, joined in this study, who had long-term COVID symptoms. And these participants all received uh, post-infective uh, vaccinations, COVID vaccinations, either with the AstraZeneca or similar virus-derived vaccines, or the mRNA vaccines. In total, about 58% of them reported improvements uh, in their symptoms, but about 18% of them reported deterioration and the rest of them reported no change. Larger improvements in symptoms, sim, uh, symptom severity score seems to be associated with the use of mRNA vaccines and less uh, in those receiving adenoviral vector vaccines. But uh, obviously, this is an interesting observation, uh, a suggestion that there is an immunological basis to this long COVID symptoms, but not something that we can still use for patient care until we have a proper study. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you for spending time with us, and I hope you have an enjoyable day.